like to welcome everybody to tonight's Chess Tactics class. We're going to cover a couple different topics. The first topic is uh, where there is a, a rook, a bishop, or a queen that operate in a straight uh, column or diagonal. Um, it's important to remember that the attacking piece can go beyond, uh, maybe past a piece that's in the way to a square past the piece in its the effect of its attack. We'll do a few examples on that. So that's called the effect of an attack beyond the enemy's man. And this, the first example, which is right here on the board, will show you how that works. This is a very simple example. But let's suppose that uh, black plays uh, rook takes rook here. That would be a blunder, of course because bishop takes queen and the bishop would guard the e1 square so there would be no checkmate. Now the, the winning move though uh, is quite simply, see how the, the black rook operates along the whole file and indirectly attacks the bishop on e1 even though there's a white rook in the way. So the winning move is queen takes bishop check, rook takes rook, Rick takes Rick checkmate. So this, this example is simple just to show the idea of the topic, the first topic tonight. Let's go on to the next example. You can see that white has the two rooks doubled on the king file, a rook at e2 and e1. He has the queen on d4. The queen and two rooks are attacking the knight on e5. The knight on e5 is defended by the two pieces of bishop and a rook. So it looks like rook takes knight, bishop takes rook, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, queen takes rook. White can win two pieces for a rook, but that's actually a blunder. It sets black up for our topic tonight. So white does try to do that, but that's a losing move. Similar to the last example, who in the audience would care to say what the winning move is? Queen takes Right. Queen takes, and then uh, rook has to take. The queen can interpose, so it's not mate. Rook takes rook, and uh, we won the exchange with that. Uh, white took the knight, but uh, we ended up, black ended up the exchange ahead with a one game. Okay, let's go to our next example. Again, uh, we have to make a couple, uh, ultimately black makes a couple moves that aren't the most accurate, so let's go right to it. White's going to win this game, but it, again, it depends on black making some inaccurate moves. The first move, black moves the rook up to attack the queen. It looks like, um, Black's trying to win the pawn on e5, perhaps. Queen goes down, threatens queen takes rook checkmate. Black blunders and does rook takes pawn on e5. And like the last example, the winning move is queen takes rook check. And then the rook follows. So again, the, the idea is that the rook on e3, even though there's a rook on e5, the rook is indirectly attacking the e8 square. So he's affecting black's man the, uh, or on uh, e8, even though there's a rook on e5 between them. Oh, I didn't finish it. That's probably what you're getting at. The bishop can drop back. Now there's a, a nice checkmate. Rook takes bishop and rook down because the bishop guards the king's escape square. Yeah, that's what you're getting at. So that was good you brought that up. Now this is a little unusual. You would think that uh, this idea of a piece on a straight line is a uh, attacking motif, which it has been in our other examples. But in this example, it's a defensive mo motive. 
So the uh, black bishop on h4 is attacking the pawn on e7. And it looks like there's nothing uh, white can do to prevent losing the pawn. But white thinks he can play rook to uh, d8, threatening rook takes rook check. And if bishop takes pawn, then rook takes rook check would lead to checkmate. But black has a defense because the bishop on h4 not only attacks the pawn on e7, he has an indirect impact on the d8 square. So the answer is rook takes rook, pawn takes queen, and bishop takes pawn, saves the day, and black wins the game being a piece up. Our last example, okay, it's white to play as you can see, uh, let's check out the pawns. There's three for white on the king side, three for black. There's four for white on the queen side, four for black. So the pawns are even. They both have two rooks. They have a queen, and white has a bishop and a knight against two knights. White is attacking, though. He has his knight on the f5 square, attacking the pawn on d6. And his bishop on g5 attacks the knight. So white has the better position. Now in this example, uh, it starts off with the white does rook takes rook. Now if black does pawn takes rook, we don't have the, the topic of tonight. But uh, white has the better ending after pawn takes knight. But uh, attacking through on the line comes into effect if black answers queen takes. So it looks now like black wants to try trade queens. Queen takes queen, pawn takes queen. White would still have somewhat of an advantage in the ending. But the, the move of our theme tonight in our last example is the queen indirectly is attacking the d6 square and the white knight on f5, they're both attacking the d6 square, so white can play knight takes pawn, and because the queen's defended by the bishop, black wins the key pawn and uh, should win the game. So that was pretty straightforward. Now we're gonna jump to a different topic. How I pass, you can use a pass pawn, drive it as a wedge into your opponent's position, so in, the, in an end game of pass pawn, of course, you try to promote it to a queen, and then you win with the extra queen. But a pass pawn can also be driven as a wedge into your opponent's position, and of course, your opponent has to block the pass pawn, and the pieces that block the pawn leave open another area on the chessboard that you may be able to attack. So you use the pass pawn in the middle game as a wedge into your opponent's position. That's the basic idea. Let's run through a few examples. So obviously here, white has a pass pawn. It's on uh, the pawn on d5. What? Well, and interesting enough, this example works out to black's benefit. It's, it's, so you can consider this example a defensive example. This example is how you can block the pass pawn and actually get the better position sometimes. So black is going to be a little better, but let's step into the uh, moves. White plays rook to d1. He needed to protect the pawn. You can see that the pawn is not protected and the threat's queen takes pawn, so the rook comes over, and uh, black moves his rook over to c8 to attack the pawn down on c3 and to operate on that half-open c-file. White pushes the c3 pawn to c4 to reinforce his pass pawn on d5. So now he has a protected pass pawn, which is usually uh, good for for white. Now black does a strategic retreat of his knight to b7. 
When your opponent has a pass pawn on the fifth row, like the pawn on d5, you want to block it with either a knight or a bishop. If you can do it with either piece, the knight is the best one to use. Uh, the reason the knight's a little better than the bishop, the knight can sit there on, in this case, on d6 and see how it will attack the pawn on c4 and it will also attack the square e4, allowing black to move his pawn on e5 up, driving the white knight away from the center of the board. So that's black's plan. White could, could maintain equality here, but white makes a couple weak moves. This rook to e3 is a weak move, and it leads to black getting some advantage. So black brings the knight up to block the passed pawn, just like I was saying. Now, white could still get an even position if he retreats his rook to e2, but he's trying to attack that pawn on e5, so he mistakenly moves the, the rook on d1 to e1, and he's attacking the d5, the e5 pawn, he temporarily threatens to win it, but it's, it's a wrong idea because bl black can just shove the pawn up one square. See how the knight blocks the passed pawn on d5 and protects the black pawn on e5, and now the knight on f3 can't even, now if it could go to, to the square d4, then uh, the knight would threaten to go into c6, and white would probably be okay. So going back, you can see that if this white rook on d1 had stayed there and black moved the pawn to e4, the d1 rook would protect the d4 square and the knight could move there, which would be better for white, probably be an even position. That's why moving the rook off the d file to e1 to attack the pawn is the wrong idea. The pawn comes up, now the knight can't go to d4, so it comes back to d2 and uh, threatens to win the pawn. But now black has this good move, he brings the bishop, he activates the bishop from f6 to d4, driving the rook back. and uh, black has the better position. We'll stop here. The computer evaluates this as a big plus for black. I didn't go further into it, but uh, who, in the, well, who in the audience would care to make a, suggest a move for white in this position? How about you? Do you have any idea where he should move his rook? Rook two. Yeah, that's his best. It protects the f2 square, and the two rooks protect each other. And it threat white threatens knight takes pawn on e4. Knight takes knight, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, winning the pawn. But unfortunately, when black moved the bishop from f6, it unblocked his pawn on f5. So black can effectively protect his pawn with what move? Um, F5. F5. Now look, black has two pawns coming down toward the ki king side. Black has the much better game. Let's go on to our next example. If it was white's move, White could win an exchange. How could White win an exchange if it was his move? Any ideas? He could fork the two rooks, couldn't he? Knight to c6. Uh, black would probably do rook takes bishop. We could do the knight takes the rook, and I think we could extract our, our knight and stay stay ahead because that bishop, the knight could possibly come back to c6, maybe. We'd have to look into it a little more. But anyway, it's black's move, so he stops knight to c6. Oh, it's white's move. White plays g4, 
He wants to attack black with his uh, kingside pawns. Now, the black f pawn, it, on the surface, you might think black could do knight takes pawn, but notice it would open the line of white's bishop on e4 down to the h7 pawn, and then, of course, queen takes pawn would lead to check, king over, and queen to h8 would lead to checkmate. So, so that pawn on f4 can't be touched. Let's see what black does. Black moves his bishop to b7, stopping uh, knight to c6. White attacks the queen. Now white takes the bishop. So we didn't get our uh, knight fork, but we look at that bad position uh, of that uh, black queen rook. It's... <laughs> It can't move anywhere but backwards because of its, uh, the three black pawns around it. And on b7, it's unprotected, but uh, white can't win it. If he dropped his queen to f3, all black has to do is move that c pawn, and then the two rooks would guard each other. Let's see what white does. Oh, he did, he did attack it. So that forces c5 so the two rooks defend each other. But um, notice, in this position, there is no pass pawn. That white D pawn isn't passed because there's a pawn on C7 that would prevent it from advancing. But after here, threatening the rook, and now um, if he retreats the rook, then the knight to C6 forks the, the two rooks. So he plays the pawn up, but notice now we get a passed pawn by playing, uh, we're going to play d5 at some point. First, white chooses to retreat the knight, attacking the queen. The queen moves back to c7, the pawn advances. Now there's a threat of pawn up one more square, forking the queen and rook. So the queen moves over. We advance the pawn anyway attacking the rook on e7. Now what I'd like you to notice about this position, see how the pass pawn supported by the rook on d1 and the knight on c4, and the pawn, once it gets to d6, it acts as a wedge in black's position, and you, it divides black's pieces on the king side and queen side, and they have to block the pawn and then we have these white pawns on f4 and g5 that are going to advance, attack, drive the knight back, and maybe advance to f6 and attack the black king side. So by use, by the, the white pieces follow behind the passed pawn, driving black back, and uh, white ends up with a crushing attack. So this is an example of how to use your pass pawn to get a very strong attack. Okay, so the work, the work, work retreats. Now the pawn comes up. So the question is, what happens if knight to, knight to e5? What happens here? There's a win here for white, a forced win. It takes one, two, it, three moves, three moves by white, it, and it demonstrates a winning position. So who would like to guess what the winning move is for white? That's a good idea, but let's take the black knight off the board first. Knight takes. Now, how about your idea? And now what? And he can't stop it, can he? The rook can't get back, and the queen can't get in front of the pawn, so the best he has to do, queen takes pawn, and we're in a rook up. So that shows you, this example shows you how you can, uh, okay, now the, so knight to e5 didn't work, 
it's a little better to go to F8, but look what we've done now. White has advanced. He has a pawn on F5 and G5. All black's pieces have been, they're on the first and second row and the knight is on F8. So um, all we've got to do is we can attack on the king side, but before we do that, it would be nice to drive that queen away from D7. Now, well, we would like to play knight to e5 and hit, attack the queen. Of course, we can't do it now because rook could take the knight. But what move could white make to prepare knight to e5? Well, that would be okay, but then black could trade off rooks, and our rook would be on our remaining rook would be on e1, not protecting the passed pawn. So there's a better way to prepare knight to e5. What square? d5. d5, that's the right move. Now the threat is knight to e5. Black really can't defend it. He moves the rook back. We get our knight to e5 in. The queen has to give way. Now we can advance our passed pawn and attack the rook on e1. Um, queen takes queen, rook takes queen, rook to d8 doesn't really help black because we have a knight fork with knight to c6. But let's see what black tries. Okay, black just moves his rook over to block the pawn. Notice how now yeah, queen. So the queen, the black queen is stuck on the queen side. Our pawn has been driven to d7, keep blocking the queen from protecting f7. So the winning move is, in fact, queen takes pawn check. Now, there are different ways to win here. The author has this square, pawn up, threatening mate. Now, Pawn takes pawn, threatening queen over mate works too, but the author has a pretty mate. Queen takes pawn, king over, knight to f7, and what's the threatened checkmate? What is it? That's right, and there's another one. Do you see the other one? That's right. So if the black knight moves to g6, stopping the queen to h8, we still have the knight to h6 checkmate. So that's a pretty, kind of a pretty example. Obviously, white is the only one who can get a pass pawn here, and it must be the pawn on d4. So somehow we're going to get the pawn, I mean the pawn on d4 needs to advance to d5, attacking the bishop on e6, but we can't play d5 right away because our it's unprotected. Our bishop blocks the rook on d1. So we need to prepare to play d5. What's the right move for white? Re remember, you want to get that pawn to d5. What's the best way to do that? Yeah, not only does that, that threatens d5, but on top of that, you're attacking the rook, gaining yourself a move. And because you, you have both the bishop and the rook, even if the rook goes to d8, it doesn't stop d5. So that's the correct move. Let's see what black does. He moves his rook over to e8, so we obviously shove our pawn up. Now he moves his bishop back there. So we made some good headway. Now we need to decide how we can further our attack. One idea, you, said, you had said bishop to g6 check. Well, maybe we could move the queen somewhere where she would threaten to go to g6 or protect the bishop to go to g6, so we could try queen to g3, for example. That would threaten bishop to g6 check. That's a possibility. There's an, the other possibility is there's 
nothing blocking our pass pawn. Remember I said we could use the pass pawn as a wedge. So let's shove the pass pawn up. Now that blocks the queen from protecting the king side and it threatens bishop to d5 check at the same time. Now the only thing blocking our pass pawn from advancing further is the bishop on d7. But black doesn't like that check on d5, which would make his king, put his king in a bad spot. So he plays e6, bishop to e6, guarding the d5 square, but that leaves our pawn able to advance another square. But the question we have to think about, if we advance the pawn and he moves his rook to d8, then he threatens rook takes pawn, and the question is, can we defend the pawn in some manner? But, uh, so we need to think about it a little further. So we're talking about pawn up. Notice when we move pawn to d7, we're not only attacking the black rook, but we opened up the d6 square for our white pieces. And if we look a little further, we see that we have a move rook to d6, attacking the queen and that bishop on e6 at the same time. And don't forget that the black rook is going to move to d8, won't be protecting the bishop on e6. And that looks like a rook sacrifice to me. Rook takes e6, then we move our bishop and get a discovered check. Looks like we should be able to work with that for an advantage. So let's see what happens. So pawn comes up, rook, oh, there's our rook to d6, very strong move. He goes to c, queen to c7. Now there's a drawback to going to queen to c7. It looks like white can't move that rook on d6 because the answer would be queen takes queen. It's not a check though, the white king's on b1, but it would be now if that black bishop wasn't on e6, take it off the board, then we would have the nice discovered attack on the black queen by rook takes bishop check. F5 is a possibility. Is there another possibility, another square we could do the same threat? <laughs> How about going to d5? Then we would actually pin the bishop against the king. I think either would work, but bishop to d5 is a little more accurate because the bishop is pinned against the king and can't move. So that's the winning move. And if bishop takes bishop, then we get our rook takes bishop check and queen takes queen with an easy win. So it was interesting to see how the pawn could drive this big wedge into black and disrupt black's defenses. Okay, well this is easy uh, from the point of view that white already has the passed pawn on e6, protected by a bishop on c4 and a rook on e1. So obviously, white to play and win. Now white's ultimate goal is to take that rook on d1 and put it down on d7, attacking the queen, and the rook would be protected by the pawn. Of course, we can't do that rook move until we get rid of the knight and the bishop, the knight on f6 and the bishop. We need to advance our pieces. There are no good, there's no, our other pawns are back on the second rank, so there are no pawn moves to be considered. Our two rooks are already in their ideal positioning at d1 and e1, so there are no rook moves to be considered. The queen and, and the bishop on f4 
or attacking the uh, black squares, it doesn't look like they should move. So we're really down to attacking with our bishop on c4 and our knight on c3. So those are the pieces. What's the uh, winning move for white? I think it's bishop c4. Or What's the other choice? Or b5. How about if we if we start with the knight, we threaten the queen. If we move the bishop first, we're not threatening anything. So you want to use the little more forceful move, which is to advance with the knight. Now, he can do knight takes or bishop takes, and then we take back, and it probably transposes. In this example, black takes with the bishop. <laughs> We take with our bishop, he takes with the knight, and we have our rook here, and we are now threatening rook to d7. How can black defend against rook to d7? Any ideas? How about moving one of the rooks over to d8? Okay, now notice that once the black rook goes to d8, the queen and rook are on the same black diagonal, and we can attack them with bishop to g5. Now he can interpose with bishop to f6. Let's see what, what's played. Oh, uh, black takes the pawn at b7. That's not a very good move. It, uh, it falls right into White's plan. White does the bishop check, forcing bishop takes now, queen takes check. Right here. If the queen interposes, then we can push our pass pawn attacking the rook with a winning game. So he moves his king over. And now we get rook to d7, and the queen has to go to f6, otherwise we have queen to g7 checkmate. So queen to f6. And we just shove our pawn up. Now obviously his only move, he has to protect his queen what, what, what does white do if black plays queen takes queen here? Do we do rook takes queen or do we have a better move? So black plays queen takes queen. What's the winning move for white? What do you think? Okay, Jason. Right, check. Winning a temple, and then we take the queen and we're a rook up. So, the only other possibility is to protect the queen, so he moves his rook up. Now what's the winning move? Who sees the winning move now? What's your winning move idea? Uh, is anything blocking our passed pawn? Yeah, yeah, and get a queen check, and rook takes, queen takes, and... We are a ruck up, aren't we? So that's the win there. Let's see, I do believe there's an interesting alternative here though. In this position, remember, the line we just looked over was knight takes bishop, rook takes. Black could have played better by playing knight to h5, attacking our queen and bishop. Now there's a good move for white here. Does anybody see what the good move for white is? We have to move the queen. Where should we move the queen? Well, we have to protect our bishop, too. So we have to move it to a square next to the bishop. Yeah, that's the right move. 
now we have a, th so we move it and we have a threat. Queen takes queen. Now black is going to attack our queen. Now what's our best move, Jason? Huh? Bishop e5. Right, pinning the bishop. Very nice. And then causing black defensive headaches. Now, if black plays c6, that's not the best move. It drives, we just retreat our bishop. And if the rook comes to f to e8, we can get our rook into d7. Queen retreats. Now the rook comes to f7, for attacking the queen and the bishop winning the game. So the best move for black here is queen takes rook, pawn takes, rook takes e5, rook takes e5, bishop takes g5, but white has rook to the eighth rank, winning the rook, and having a pass pawn to boots. Now in this position, black actually has a defense. Remember he played c6 and the bishop retreated. Black had a better move. He could move the rook on c8 to d8. White could play h3, then he could move his rook here White retreats the queen, bishop, queen, queen to g7, and white's best move is to retreat to e3, and you see white has the better game because of his pass pawn and his bishop on d5, but there's no immediate win. So black could have defended the position. Remember, in this position, black made a mistake, knight takes, that brought our rook up. Then black made the mistake of taking the pawn, giving us the check. King had to go, we got our rook in there, and then we got to advance our pawn and it was all over. So sometimes there can be defenses, but you have to check out all your possibilities. Well, the only one who has a pass pawn in this position is black. He has a pass pawn on d5. He has a knight on e4, and his queen's in, in a good spot. Well, actually, white starts out. He plays knight to c5, attacking the bishop. So it looks like we're going to have to defend the bishop or move it. But actually, a stronger move is to advance our pass pawn, attacking the bishop on e3, knight takes the bishop on d7, now we've got a pawn on e3, and we're threatening queen to f2 check, king over, we'd have queen takes rook pawn check, and the game would soon be over. So white prevents queen to f2 check by blocking it with his bishop attacking the knight, but the knight can advance, protected by the pass pawn, the knight forks the rook and the bishop, the rook moves, now the other knight comes in and now we've got three pieces attacking the bishop, it's only defended by a queen and pawn, so we're threatening to win a pawn. White really can't stop that, he just moves his king up. But that lets the queen come in and check. The king moves up to h3. Now we take, oh, and notice that we had a choice of knights to take. We took with the knight on d2 because we want the knight on d4 to protect the pawn when it goes to e2. So that's why that knight took. The pawn advances, and now we threaten queen takes pawn check. He blocks it, but that leaves the pawn unprotected. Queen takes pawn check. The queen blocks the check, and now we have queen to f1 check, attacking the king and rook, and if rook takes queen, pawn takes, and we get our queen back, and we win a rook.
Okay, let's go on to the next example. Okay. Well, in this case, black must be winning. He has a pawn down on d2. Supported by the queen and the rook. Let's see how black breaks through. Oh, well, white immediately blunders. <laughs> white plays b5, not, not a good move. It opens up that diagonal between the two rooks, that black diagonal from a1 to f6. So black jumps on it with the queen and the threat is queen takes rook on a1, queen takes queen, and then our passed pawn is unblocked. We can do pawn to d1, queen check, queen takes queen, rook takes queen is checkmate. So that's a threat. And we're threatening the rook on f6, and so he moves the rook, and now we carry out the queen takes rook threat I just mentioned. Okay, now, okay, now the authors, even though queen takes rook wins, the author points out that he could avoid rook takes pawn on c7 check by what move? Before he plays queen takes rook on a1. What, how could uh, black snuff out white's little attack on c7 with the rook? getting a discovered check. Any ideas? Rook to g3. Yes, rook to g3. End of attack on c7. New variation. Say pawn takes. We still have our nice little queen takes rook. And, of course, we get our queen back. He takes our queen. And, lo and behold, we're a, a knight up. However, the author points that out, but queen takes rook still wins. Rook takes pawn check, king over. Rook here check, but now we still have rook to g3, so I guess it works out. Rook takes rook check, knight takes rook, queen takes queen. There's still a winning move. What is it? Pardon? Yes, rook to c3, and there's no defense because of the back row mate, and the, the uh, pawn guards rook to c1, so that wins too. Well, it looks like white has the past pawn already stuck down on f7. We have a rook on g4 and a queen on g3 attacking a bishop on g7. This is a pretty mate. I challenge the audience to find the winning moves. White to play and win. I'll be impressed if you guys find it. It's tricky. Bishop takes h6. That's a new move. Let's see if it works. So if I do bishop takes, pardon? Okay. Any other ideas? I'm going to give you guys a hint. There's a rook sacrifice. What, what rook can we sacrifice and where can we sacrifice it? Rook takes bishop, yes. Now obviously he has to do knight takes. Okay, so that was one tricky part. There's still a tricky move. What's the winning move for white now? No, uh, king takes. Bishop, that's right, bishop to h6. And if this rook takes, then what? Queen to g7. 
freeing our past pawn and we get a mating attack, don't we? Yes. Okay. So far, so, so much for that one. But there's another way to take the rook. What's your answer now? Oh, yeah, we go up this way, and uh, that's it, isn't it? He had, can interpose the queen, but uh, then pawn takes queen as double check, and that's checkmate, so. Well, then it's, okay, that, this is pretty, though. Look, it's a, we get a queen, so we're checking by the rook on f1. That's double check. He has to move the king here. Well, and then we just drop our queen here, and we get a checkmate. So that was kind of a pretty example. White to play and win. We only have three minutes, so you're going to have to work fast. What should white do? Bishop takes c6. Let's see. Well, it's a new move. Is there a defense? Rook to d1 check. So that's a good defense. What does uh, white do now? Um, Is there a better move for white? I know there's a master in the audience. I'd like to know his opinion. Let me prompt you. Our queen and rook are attacking the a7 pawn, right? How can we pile up on that pawn with one more piece? Yeah, rook to a6. Oh, rook to d1. But we can stop the checkmate with knight back. Rook takes, bishop takes, and no way to stop c7. The knight is in a terrible position on the side of the board and can't help the black queen. That I, if I hadn't seen the answer myself, I don't think I would have ever guessed all this. Let's go back. So, the move is rook here. Black tries check. Knight into blocks. Rook takes knight. Queen back. Bishop takes bishop. Rook takes bishop. Rook, pawn takes. Black's a piece up, looking good. Queen takes pawn check. Looks like we have a perpetual check, doesn't it? Check. But we don't take the perpetual check. We go to e4. Then we shove our passed pawn. He blocks it. He has to block it. Otherwise, we have pawn up check. Queen, now he has to retreat. And now we don't push the pawn we move the queen, and now we threaten c7, and he can't stop us from queening our pawn. That'll cover it for tonight. Thanks for coming. Bye.